We are in uh, Verona, of course, uh, the city of uh, Romeo and Juliet. But um, if you were to live here back in the 1850s, you would have found a remarkable man on the street. His name is, uh, was Cesare Lombroso. Uh, back in 1878, um, Cesare would share with the world uh, one of these most uh, irresistible idea of his career, which was that you can distinguish whether someone is a criminal or not based on the faces. So there is a criminal face. That was his idea. So inspired by this uh, funny, creative, crazy man, in the next 10 minutes, uh, we're going to do a very simple thing. We are trying to answer one simple question. What's in a face? You know, faces are quite complex. For example, take uh, Miriam's uh, face. Can you really tell that uh, she's not a criminal based on her face? No, <clears throat> no, I'm not a criminal. I'm a computer vision scientist. So I try to teach machines how to analyze and understand images. Right, so, uh, you know when you take a picture with your phone and you have this nice little square around the face? Well, those squares are part of my job. I design algorithms that can read the thousands of stories behind the faces. For example, take these two very attractive computer scientists. <laughs> can you tell by looking at our pictures what are the places where we like to hang out? Like hipster places, or more cool alternative places, more posh, sophisticated kind of places. Um, probably one thing you can definitely tell with our picture is that we don't hang out together that much. No, we definitely no. don't get, hang out no. together that much, but to be a bit more um, serious, uh, let's say that uh, the talk is about faces, right? So to answer the question of uh, what is in a face, um, uh, we actually partner with uh, two social psychologists uh, from the University of Texas uh, in Austin, uh, Sam and Lindsay. So we're back in Austin, and um, Sam and Lindsay had a brilliant idea. They basically selected 49 cafes and restaurants in Austin. And what did they do? They sent a group of students there, but not to have a drink or to grab a, some food. But what they did, the students, is they, they quantified with surveys the ambience of the restaurants and cafes. And then, based on the students' ratings, for the first time, we created, we created this beautiful ambience wheel. Basically, you go to your favorite restaurant, you go to your favorite cafes, if there are hipsters around here, and then now you can actually quantify and classify the ambience of that cafe, of, of that restaurant, with these different, 18 different ambiences. You know, a place could be for relaxing people, for uh, boring people, people, for, 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 for crazy people, uh, for very creative people, that's the ambience, right? But then, then what we did, is we needed faces, right? So what we did, we collected 25 faces of the cafes and restaurants in Austin. And we did that through the social networking site called Foursquare. People were going there, the customers, checking in, profile pictures. So we have, for each of these cafe and restaurants, we have the ambience captured by the students and the 25 faces. So we were ready. We were ready to answer our question, which was, can you really predict, tell, guess the ambience of a cafe or a restaurant based on just 25 faces? Maybe. So, to answer this question, we used computer vision techniques. So we gave to an algorithm the ambience of a place together with the 25 pictures of the people that go to that place. And the algorithm automatically learns how to correctly associate faces with place ambiences. 
So from these faces, um, the algorithm automatically extracts the photographic quality of the picture. So for example, uh, brightness, contrast, symmetry, and so on. The color distribution, so the amount of reds, green, yellow, but not only that, because we are looking at faces. So we ask the algorithm to automatically detect the facial expression of the subject and the demographic properties of the subject. Um, and then uh, the self-presentation features. The what? Oh, the famous. The famous, yes, uh, the famous presentation. Uh, presentation features. Um, so think about Facebook profile pictures, right? So some are more unique, some are more ordinary. Some people wear glasses, others wear sunglasses. Some people show the face and some people actually don't. Because people make specific stylistic choices that reflect their personality. And those are the self-presentation features. All right, all right. Hmm. So basically now the algorithm knows a um, description, a numerical description of the average customer face. And it is now ready to automatically guess the ambience of a place by just looking at the picture of the people that go to that place. Wow. Beautiful. Wow. So to give you an example, we took your faces. So we divided them between organizers of the TEDx and you guys, the audience. Ta -da. We gave them to the algorithm, and what the algorithm says is that you guys in the audience tend to go to more creative and less traditional places compared to the guys in the organization. It's not my fault, it's really nothing personal. Uh, it's just, yeah. <laughs> It's not my fault, it's just no. about the color of your pictures. Right, it's about the colors. And, uh, but really, nobody can explain you the complexity of uh, Miriam's algorithms um, because it's a sophisticated uh, machinery. But uh, above all, it's uh, unbelievably, unbelievably accurate. In test, the algorithm, uh, when predicting ambience from faces, uh, had an error of 12 points on a scale of 100. Then, of course, we were also interested uh, in the algorithm, so we, we started to interrogate the algorithm, the association between faces and ambience and places. Uh, we, we inspected the algorithm, and then uh, at last, the relevation came. Reading places? Full of people with glasses. Wow. Creative places. Uh, full of people who love yellow. And um, uh, friendly places. Full of people smiling. Smiling. Right. So then, uh, based on these results, we also interrogated the students. So we asked them, we showed them the pictures, and we asked them where these people might go, what kind of place they might like, based on their faces. And what they said is that, well, more or less, they agreed with the algorithm, right? So reading places, uh, glasses, yes. uh, friendly places, people smiling, right? No surprise there. But more interestingly, at times, they also disagree with the algorithm. And let me give you two examples on when they disagree. First, romantic places. Full of women, uh, the student said. And the agree said, mm, not really. Actually, romantic places are associated with pictures with warm colors. And the second example is uh, pickup places. What the student said? Full of women again, uh, just for a change. Whereas the algorithm said, uh huh, hang on, pick up, you need to pick up people, so you need an equal balance between men and uh, women, of course. And really, if you compare this kind of an interesting examples, you can see that um, the algorithm is objective. It beautifully extracts colors, lines, textures, the way the pictures are organized. Whereas underneath uh, the student's evaluation, underneath our evaluation, underneath your evaluation, underneath any human evaluation, there lies an explosive charge of stereotypes. Oh, yes. And so with our research, our research is symbolic. 
it's the data that maybe is telling us you might not need your stereotypes anymore. We are taking you into a world free of stereotypes and full of stories. Thank, Thank you. you.